Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome to another episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please be sure to follow us also on Facebook and Twitter. Now those are up and running uh, really well and there's a lot of new stuff coming out on them. And also be sure to check out the free resource link below to learn much more about AI than we can teach in one of these short videos because that's not our focus. Our focus is not teaching AI. Our focus is the big picture of AI and especially the human impact. So check out that free resource. I think you'll benefit from it a lot. Um, so today we're talking about robotics and this is going to be a big year for robotics with the market for robots expected to increase over 10%, which is a big number for uh, physical products. That's a big growth rate. Uh, on a compounded growth rate, that means in 10 years, there will be triple the robots around that there are now, three times as many in 10 years. Uh, so, a lot is happening in robotics, and there was a really cool blog that I found that gave us a good update, and I'll share that link at the end. So cobots, we talked about that about uh, 10 videos ago, but a cobot is a robot that works with a human. It doesn't replace a human. It works with a human because uh, the human needs to tend to it from time to time. So... Uh, they were talking about cobots specifically with regard to operating machinery in production manufacturing environments. So right now, 80% of all machines around the globe are run by humans. And that equates to 650 billion with a B in payroll. This is a huge number, folks, and draws a lot of attention to it. Um, so obviously with that kind of payroll that can be disrupted, there's a lot of companies that are doing stuff in the cobot space, which doesn't eliminate headcount, but it reduces it. So for example, Rapid Robotics will provide a robot machine tender for only 25,000 a year, pre-trained, the thing is already trained, and the estimate is that on two shifts for payroll, this is going to save $80,000 a year against a $25,000 cost. A company will make that deal all day, every day in manufacturing. Anything that has greater than one year payback or 100% ROI, <laughs> Uh, return on investment is going to fly off the shelves. And this thing is at about a 300% ROI plus uh, and a fraction of a year payback. So this is going to mean that more and more machines in production environments are going to be loaded by robots and unloaded by robots and tended and observed. And, and if something stops, get it running again by a human being. So this is just started. I mean, there's some industries where automation is high, like automobile manufacturing, but most industries are not like that yet. Uh, so there's a long way to go. And if only 20% of potential cobot automation is done, most of it is not done. So this is going to really, really take off. The next is uh, two very different, difficult things to do <laughs> is bin picking and then uh, putting it into a transport container for transport to the shipping dock. Uh, this is very difficult in robots. Now, Amazon is way ahead of most companies in this respect because they have million square foot warehouses. Most businesses 
take up less than 100,000 square feet total, including the office. That's how big these warehouses that Amazon runs are 20 times the size, building-wise, of a typical company. 20 times bigger. Uh, so no wonder they're ahead. But this Ambi Robotics has something called DexNet. So what's hard about bin picking is that um, there's many different sizes and shapes of things in all of these bins in the warehouse. And robots typically have to be trained to pick up a specific size and shape, and they can only move that size and shape. Unless you're a very, very, very high volume environment, that doesn't make sense. What's different about what Ambi is doing is they've created DexNet, which is a deep learning neural net that can train itself to pick up millions of different size parts and do it very quickly. It's 10,000 times faster than current robot training models for picking from bins. 10,000 times faster. This is a stunning breakthrough and it opens the door to automation of warehouses at much, much smaller companies, much smaller. Uh, so uh, warehouses, I've said it before, I'll say it again, find a, start working on a different career path now, okay? Because between uh, the, what's happening with cobots and robots and uh, bin picking and stuff like that, warehouse work is gonna go the way of the dodo bird. Um, then the blog talked about who's biggest in robotics. Where are the places that robotics have been most heavily adopted? Singapore, Korea, Japan, Sweden, and Denmark. These are places with global production distribution and limited workforces. All of these, Singapore, Korea, Japan, Sweden, Denmark, have limited workforces. And so robotics exponentially increases potential output. Uh, so it's not really a surprise that some of the smaller countries, some of which are very populated, but small in, in geography, and some, many of which uh, are small in population, are leading the way in using robotics. Um, the next thing that the blog mentioned is robot roughnecks. So uh, working on oil rigs is the third most dangerous job that there is, uh, which means it's extremely dangerous. I had a buddy who used to work on an offshore oil rigs and um, they're very, very high paying jobs and super demanding. They would work two weeks on and then get two weeks off and basically earn full-time pay uh, at a high level. Uh, but because this is such a dangerous job, we've talked about how robots are going to replace people in dangerous jobs, and they are forecasting that by 20, as soon as 2030, most of the oil rigs for the US and Russia will be fully automated, fully automated. So uh, this is what's coming. It's, a, it's an isolated example, but it's what's coming in general. Um, and then there's another company called Uvea, which developed a ultraviolet scanning machine for airplanes to decontaminate them because of the pandemic, COVID. This thing, that they developed can be deployed in five minutes to each aircraft and cleans the entire aircraft in only 10 minutes. With this, this is not going to be just COVID. It isn't. Why? There's a lot of communicable disease. I'll give you a mind-blowing statistic. Mind-blowing. Um, in 2019, due to the flu in the United States, there were 23,000 deaths from flu. Guess how many there were the following year in 2020 because everyone was wearing masks? Take a guess. Several hundred. 
down from 23,000 to several hundred only because people were wearing masks. So for a lot of people, masks are here to stay. Why? Because anytime they're in a crowded place on public transit, uh, this is not the last pandemic. It is not. There will be another one. To be clear, MERS, SARS, 10 years later, COVID, eight years later, not only is it regular and repeating, but it's accelerating. So uh, this kind of cleaning technology is going to be everywhere all the time, cleaning public spaces. This particular application is aircraft, but uh, a lot of you have probably seen uh, these kind of things, cleaning floors in airports and bus terminals and train stations and stuff like that. This is game changing. It was very, very hard for public entities that run public facilities to get enough people to keep the places clean. And companies like Uve are coming with the technology that will do it robotically. And those cleaning jobs were, which really are the bottom of the ladder entry jobs will be disappearing rapidly in the next 10 years. Another thing to think about. So a lot is happening in robotics. This is just from this one blog and it's just a few things, but robotics is another exponential technology driven by AI, which is exponential itself. And two exponential technologies come together to be super exponential. So the world is changing, it's changing fast and the rate of change is increasing and it's going to change blindingly fast 10 and 20 years from now, so be ready. Thanks, click the link below, learn more about AI. Free resource, doesn't cost a thing, you can learn a lot more about AI. Below that link will be the link for this blog, which is a cool blog, you can follow that and please like, subscribe, and share, and be a small donor on Patreon. A dollar a month will allow us to significantly expand our programming. Thanks a lot, take care, and see you next time.